Okay, uh, we'll get started. Uh, I never got any more work done on my glove last time because uh, I just ran out of time at home. I've had too many projects on the go and my my lathe motor burnt up. It's brand new. It's only uh, it's 20 years old, but it was brand new. It's never been ever been used. I bought it and uh, uh, it was in, in the hardware store in the basement and they brought it up and I got it for half price. So anyway, so uh, I've done, I was turning uh, gavels and uh, I was just standing, I was just finishing up a handle and uh, all of a sudden sparks came flying and blew the fuse and so I've got it in at the, uh, um, there's a place over in Whitby for those who don't know that uh, repairs motors. Oscar is the guy's name I deal with. Anyway, that's my story. Uh, so I didn't have time to do a whole bunch of stuff this time around. So what will, uh, so we've got that hand and the arm separated. Likewise over here, and you can mess around with this hat and get it shaped. It still looks a little bit too bulbous. And uh, the back of his head, of course, uh, you got to kind of visualize that by looking at it side on. And you'll see that uh, the back of the head is a little bit uh, too pronounced. So by removing some wood in in here and curving the back of the head, you create more material for the to complete the hand and and the, and the ball and the glove and all that stuff. Okay. So the, what I want to point out here is, is that on the feet, we, we Marilyn decided that we're going to do a, the one off the ground, so that's fine. Doesn't matter which one to me. But there's two things I want you to see here. First of all, the one on the ground has a curve this way. And the one off the ground has a curve the opposite way. And that's the way the rough out is cut. You'll notice that it, the one off the ground has got the curve up. And the one on the, uh, with the one on the ground, it's got the curve. So he's standing on his toe on the one on the ground. And this one on the top is an exaggeration to show that the, the, the foot is pointed. And, you know, he's putting that emphasis in there. He's curled his toe, if you will. So, we, and it looks like we've got a heck of a lot of material there in both cases, but when you consider the amount that has to take place in order to create the cleats, it's, that's where all the thickness comes in. That's why we need all that amount of material. So be hesitant to take off a whole bunch of material, but we will in fact work from the top down. Now this toe, um, this one up on top, and I exaggerated it a little bit in mine, and I turned the the toe to point towards the back of his body more, and that just gives it a little bit more motion, a little bit more emphasis on the on the shape. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to curve the front of it. Uh, keep in mind that the big toe is on the inside all the time. Okay. Uh, think, look at your feet and realize that the big toe is on the end, and then uh, then we'll we'll I'll shape the the front of the foot, and the other thing to point out here is that um, this one on the bottom, you can see how it's curved. It matches the bottom. The one on the top uh, doesn't. It kind of comes back straight, so the curve is strictly on the bottom of the of the. Uh, of the shoe of the foot. So if you look at this guy here, you'll see what I mean. So the one on the bottom has got the curve matching the bottom, or the guy on the top it doesn't. Um, the reason for that, I would assume, and I'm not in Dave Stenson's mind, but uh, I would assume that because it's raised, there's no stress on it, so therefore it's still got the bulk there. So all this is is a flap on the top. So try and, uh, try and forget about the flap on the top and we're just going to go for an A shape. And by curling the, the toe and taking some material off the front, okay, and curling that on the one on the top, that emphasis, puts the emphasis on the shape of the, the foot within the shoe. Whereas the one on the bottom is pushing down, so this becomes a little bit flatter here. Okay, so all the mechanics, you wouldn't think there would be that much involved with doing a, a shoe uh, or a boot, and, but it's important that you uh, get that concept going. Okay, so 
we have to make we have to make this foot and this foot the same size. So I'm going to start by uh, creating the curve, and I use that big uh, 20 millimeter number five just to start giving my my shape. So there's where I, I see where the foot is going to be and if you start looking at it from the bottom you'll see that if I'm going to curve that in here I'm going to have to take some material off of, uh, off of this side over here aren't I in order to make that curve work uh, and I want to make it uh, about the same size as this one I guess they could be a little bit different but try and keep them relatively close in size so I'm going to have to take some material off of the outside here. Now a boot can, doesn't necessarily have to have the big toe forward I guess because uh, it's within a boot and but uh, I always like to create it like a shoe idea. So I'm going to measure the width of this one here and so I can see that it's about yay wide and that one there. So I've still got material over here I've got to take off in order to make that relatively the same size as the one on the bottom. So the front of the boot is more or less the right size there now I would say. Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty close. Maybe a little bit more bulbous, but not too much. And then uh, the heel, and you can see that the heel's already, I've already shaped the width of my heel. So I'm going to get a triangular shape coming back. So we're all, we're just looking at the footprint at this point in time. Just trying to get the, visualize what, if they put that foot in a, in a bunch of mud, that uh, that's the way it's going to come out. That shape is what we're after. Okay, I'll uh, work a little bit on that. So the footprint looks like that. And this narrow heel, uh, really bulbous at the front. So now we're going to shape the top of the uh, the foot. And again, it looks like we got a whack of material here. But once you start working on it, it disappears pretty fast. So I got to curve the front of this up so I'm going to use the same gouge and start to work my way. I'm going to work from the top down eventually. It's a little bit hard. To doing is taking the and making the curvature uh, come up. You know, the next thing I'm going to have to work on is the, the flap so I'm going to have to take a bit more material out but let's just get the general shape. Okay, so that looks like that. So I've just rounded it off the, the toe just a little bit. And now I want to try and visualize where that flap on the top is going to be. <clears throat> you see how the, the flap comes over and then comes up either side? So that's, the, that's in this shape right here. Now if we look at the, the finished one, you'll have a better chance of visualizing it. So you can see that the flap is the most uh, the highest part of it in here. So I'm going to create that flap and then finish off the toe. So I want to get that part done first. So I'm going to guesstimate as to where it's going to end up. You can spend a lot of time measuring if you like, but uh, uh, it doesn't have to be perfectly exact. So my, my flap is going to sit in something like that. Just mark it in and, and hope that it comes out. I mean, it, make it could make it a little bit wider if you want. But uh, I want to start just by 
creating the two edges. And the front. Make basically a little square going across there. I can shape it however I want it later. So I'm turning my V-tool on its side so I'm taking off material towards the toe as I'm removing the and creating the flap on top. So right away you can see that uh, maybe if I come in a little bit tighter. Right away you can see I've started to create the flap just by creating that edge all the way around. Okay, I'll do one more step and then I'll pass it around. So I want to create this, I want to create this hollow that's in here. So I'm going to pick out a gouge. This happens to be a number nine, eight millimeter. So I'm going to create the hollow in here. More importantly, I don't want to lose that concept that that there is movement in there. There is a requirement to make that hollow in there. And if you put it in there ahead of time, you won't, hopefully you won't lose it. Hi. So there it is, with the hollow uh, started in there. And maybe move this up a little bit further on both sides. And I haven't, I haven't addressed where it's going to end yet because I, I want to shape more of the, the foot before I get to that stage. Again, it still looks like we got a whack of material here, but remember we got all that cleat to put in there, so you'll use it up pretty fast. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll pass this. So there it is with it done that far. So now I want to shape the toe and just try and keep your mind away from this bottom piece here because like that's all cleat and uh, we don't need that yet. So I want to I want to shape this uh, toe here. See how the toe comes up kind of pointy? So I need to take a bit of material off the front of it here. So if I was to put a mark on there, you know, as you remember you've got to have the, you've got the toe and then you've got the sole before you get to the cleat. So you've got to, you've got to get to that section there. So if you see, forget about the sole and everything, you see the, the shape that comes up there. Okay, so from there all the way up has to have a you know that curve in there. So let's try and visualize that. So if I was to guesstimate where the the cleat's going to be, well there we'll do that. But then I have to curve this toe here up. So I'll go ahead and do that. So see how I've shaped that toe there now. And you can give it whatever shape you want. I just put a little V cut down here just so I could create that shape of a curling uh, underneath. See it starts to curl underneath. And so um, these are going to be cleats down here and you can see that I've got lots of material here for the cleat and because it's going to be set back in when uh, we'll decide and we'll get the cleat pattern later on. But it's just about time now to, to put a a V cut down here to create the bottom of the sole. It's not the top. We were going to create this bottom of the sole down here. So we want to create that shape coming down here. So I, again, I'll just take a V tool, and uh, I mean you can draw it on if you like, but you can you can likely uh, just freehand it. We're just trying to get a mark there so that we don't lose our concept of what's going to happen next. Just 
just kind of like that. Uh, if it doesn't look just right, move it up a little bit. Uh, that one there was a little bit low, so move it up. And more exaggeration, if you put more of a bend in here, you get more exaggeration and so on. Turn your V-tool on its side. Create a flat edge for the for the cleats. Don't go in too deep because remember you still got to create those cleats. I found that I had a little bit of difficulty, if I remember correctly, when I done the original that they uh, had to get the separation between the cleats and that, uh, because it's all ingrain, created a little bit of a problem, but a little bit difficult. Just roughly do it. Oh, it looks something like that. I haven't even touched the back yet. Okay. Okay, so there we are. And uh, I've got the, the cutout done all the way around for the cleats now. Um, and so now we gotta, we're working our way up now. So uh, now I got to create the the hollow in here, and if you take a look at the the, the design here, you'll see what I mean. We got to create the the top part of his shoe, if you want the the, the boot. Okay. So in the finished one, um, you can see there's what I've done. It's the same scoop out of here. So the key part here is that the that the heel protrudes out the back. Take a look at your foot. That's exactly the way your heel protrudes out the back before you get to the ankle. So you got to create this bulbar section in here, and then we're going to create the hollow. And we're going to start all the way from the top of the flap on the front and come down around and go right around the back. So it's going to be a, a, a screw, scoop all the way. Now you can draw that on, or you can just start to do it. Now I'm going to shorten this up. A, I'm going to shorten this up just a little bit. See how, uh, whoops, see how I, I'm going to shorten it up so I get a little bit more material in, in this area here. Uh, I'm going to start it. Mark, pen won't mark right. So then I've got to come down, and then I've got to get down a long, long ways down here, and then the heel comes back up, so I'll start the heel first and then create this hollow coming down around here. Might have to shorten this up just a bit more again. So kind of get the idea of the scoop and the coming up part of the heel. The same on the other side, you're going to have, I tend to take the hard spot first, this is hard to get access to, and make it work and then I match it on the other side, make it come across. Okay, and it's relatively flat coming across uh, the section in here. Uh, a slight curve where it's a bit higher here, but you can see where, what I'm getting at here. It's got to really drop down and then come back up. Nearly a vertical cut in this area here. And I just take a V-tool to do that. So I'm just going to shape it with that. I'll go ahead and get that done. So without shaping the ankle at all, I've created the the cut all the way around here and continue it around, continue it around, there we go. So we still got to work our way up to create the ankle, but uh, just get that general shape for that boot. So there it is, they're done and with the 
the cleat, the cleats are going to be there. Uh, the toe is more or less done. Uh, a couple of things. I, I'd like you to spend a bit of time and and shape the this boot, however, whatever shape you want it to be. Uh, get a, a relatively flat gouge, a number three or a number five, and, and shape your heel, get that all shaped around. Um, use the gouge upside down or backwards and just get, get the get the nice shape coming there. Uh, likewise, uh, for the, the front of it, uh, get the, this shaped here and quite often you'll have a a bit of a hollow particularly on the inside not necessarily on the outside of the boot uh, so over here you might want to put a bit of a more of a hollow in here but get all of the boot shaped before you work on the ankle so you're going to make the boot and then you're going to make the foot fit into the boot one more thing I'll point out to you is this flap on top is twice the thickness of the leather uh, of the boot, okay, because it's flopped over. So when you do the hollow in here, in this section in here, to establish the top part of his foot, then you've got to hollow that out more in order to make that flap sit proud. Do you understand what I mean there? Okay, so when, you, when we get to that stage, you want to make sure that you've got uh, that sitting a little bit more proud than the, than the, the leather in the boot. Okay, so that, that's just some of the points to, to point out to you there. We'll, we'll uh, let you work away at that and then we'll come back and, and uh, we'll start working on uh, the ankle. Okay, so let's, let's carry on here. Okay, so once you've got, you're relatively sa satisfied with the shape of the, of the boot um, and the cleats are cut in, the flap is there. You've got an extra notch in here because the flap is thicker. So now we're going to jump to the top up in here so that we uh, establish this down here a bit. We've got to establish this, the bottom of his pants. So see how it comes down on about a 45 degree angle? So just uh, take your V-tool and and let's let's establish that. Let's get that going and and get that cut in so that we can shape the pants later on. But we got to have a a stop point for the uh, the pants, and then that becomes our start our start point for the for the uh, ankle and uh, the leg. So. Again, this same principle applies when you're going to do the other boot. Okay, so get that out of there. So there it is with the, that's where I figure the, the pant is going to end. So now all we got to do is work between the pant and the boot to get that ankle established. Gotta get that started and then we'll Okay, so I want to point out something to you, and then I want you to forget about it. <laughs> okay, in the diagram, and it's very clear uh, with this bottom foot, or more clear with the bottom foot, because you don't have, you can't see the back of the heel in in this uh, picture here. But if you take a look here, you see that on the old-fashioned and, and even some of the players today have that strap that comes down underneath the foot and then comes back up the other side to hold the pants in place. I want you to remember that it's there and then forget about it because we've got to shape the outside before we can accommodate a feature like that. So that here, here, and I can show you here, on the ankle at the back, see the hollow in there and there's a hollow on the other side and this sits a little bit proud. So that applies for this foot as well. And you can't see it quite as clearly in here, but it is there. All right. And then the ankle protrudes. The ankle sits out. And that's on both sides. The ankle sits out a little bit. So it's a bit hollow here and a bit hollow here. And we've got to shape the, we've got to shape the angle in here a little bit. The ankle has to be cleaned out 
and shapes, and I, I'm just picking a gouge here. So I want to shape the outside first, and I'm picking the hard spot because this is hard to get at, access to. So there, it's started to shape. I'm going to hollow out a little bit more where it comes out of the boot. Uh, switch gouges here. And now, now that I've got the the ankle protruding, protruding there, now I'm going to come in and I'm going to take a scoop out of the back. That's a bit awkward because it's in the tough grain there. And then a little bit on the front. And you can play around with this a bit. So now that I've got now I've got an ankle in there. Uh, see if we can do the same on the other side. So get a hollow coming out of here. You got quite a bit of wood in there, so you can, you got a lot to, to play with. Don't be afraid to, if you mess up, only you and I are going to know about that, nobody else is. What's that? <laughs> yeah. I've never seen a one-legged ball player either, but you know the uh, there was a pitcher. I don't know if he's still pitching or not, and uh, he only had one hand. So it looks something like that. And I'll smooth it out a bit. So now I want to create the hollow in the back of the heel here. So I, I use a gouge to, of a similar shape to that and uh, create my hollow. And likewise, I'm going to use the same gouge on the front, so I create the hollow in here as well. Now you shape the, the leg and the ankle whatever size you want, but just remember you got to make it match or closely match the other foot, that's all. So it looks something like that. And uh, we'll have to work around a bit more on that, but that's this basically the idea. Now I will go on because we are running out of, out of time here. Um, and I'll draw the the cleats in the bottom, and I, quite frankly, I do not have any clue as to how the cleats go on the bottom of a of a a boot. But but what I what what I like to do, or what I tried to do in my my finished one, is tried to make them all the same. So I'm going to draw the front cleat on, and and that's the size I'm going to try and go by for the other cleats. Now that can be moved whichever way you want. Uh, to me that likely could be moved over a little bit. Maybe I'll use my steel eraser here and we'll, we'll move that over a bit. Yeah, I think I should move it over to about there and make it about that size there. So it looks, sorry? 
Um, well, well, eventually, yeah. Because there's the cleats on the other side of that one. And so now that's the toe cleat. And now we're going to have to have a, a cleat on this side and a cleat over here on this side here. And then another set back here and one for the heel. So uh, the one on the heel, just match it with the one on the front. And then the, the ones on the side here, what I did was I just do a, a line straight across. And that's how I lined them up. And so then the next one is up here. And up here. And I drew the, a similar one on this side. So then you can use your hand as, as a guide to go down and measure the widths of them. So then, once you get them all done, of course, then all this material, which is all end grain, by the way, uh, has to be removed. All right, so make the pattern for your cleats uh, however you wish, but try and make all the cleats the same size. Okay, try and, I found that it, it, when I first started doing it that I did, didn't have them all the same size and it really looked odd. I mean, maybe nobody would look at the cleats on a, on a caricature, but uh, anyway, I tried to make them all the same size. And I think that's what Dave tried to do here too. I think he tried to make them all the same size. But it's it's tough to get that material out of there. I used a uh, V-tool and it's tough to get that out of there because uh, it's all in grain. But take your time. Don't try and take too much at once. Just nibble away at it. Okay? So that's basically how we do a boot. Okay?